So a little bit of story time. I had a student once who came to me and she was in this program where she had automatic acceptance into med school if she was able to get a 127 in each section of the MCAT. And she came to me as a tutoring student because she had a bit, bit of a problem. She was getting like a 128, 129 in the cars and the Kim Fizz and the bio sections, but the psych section was a big problem for her. And so she was only getting like a 124. And so she came to me and she's like, okay, we have a month and uh, I just need to pull up my psych score and that's really all I need to work on. So what I did is I sat down with her and I'm like, okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through all of the stuff that the AAMC is holding you accountable for. We're gonna go through every single term, every single kind of like way of looking at society, every single scientist, every single perspective in, in um, psychology and sociology that the MCAT wants you to know and will expect you to know. But instead of going through those things and doing all the definitions, we're gonna do things a little bit different. We're gonna go through, and I want you, and this is what I told her, I want you to give me an example in your own words from your own life that can apply to every single one of these terms. And so over the next month, we did this. We just went through every single term and we met all the time. And so the, the scientist in me, the, uh, the researcher, the PhD um, portion of me was, was looking at this and saying, I need more data, right? Because that worked really well. And so over the next several years, I did the same thing with like 50 students. Um, it's actually a little bit more than 50 students. And what I found was of the students that actually went through all of this stuff, one person got a 129, everyone else got 130s and above, and 20% of my students were in what well, got perfect scores. So 20% of my students got in the 99th percentile, which means whatever we were doing was working. And so this is why I think you need to approach the psych social section a little bit differently than the other sections. For, for chemistry and for physics, like it, that kind of doesn't make sense to kind of approach it that way. Like how does magnetism work, right? Like you don't just need to come up with a story about a magnet from your life, right? You need to like understand how to apply the concepts behind magnetism and you need to know the equations and put all that stuff together. So this, this perspective that we, we took with psychology, I've, I've done experiments with students and like it just doesn't work as well in the other sections, but it works so well for the psychology and sociology section of the exam. And that's for a couple of reasons. First off, um, some of you may know that a lot of my PhD work was focusing on memory. So memory is something that is really interesting to me, but stuff sticks in our brain better if it is a story that sticks way better than definitions, right? It's actually a different type of memory. It's episodic versus semantic memories. Um, episodic being experiences and kind of things like that, semantic being facts. And so they're, they're treated differently in our brains. And it turns out that in terms of long-term memories, like episodic is better. And so you're gonna hold on to those things better long-term. Just kind of, I want you to pause and think about your time in high school and middle school, right? Like how many definitions did you try to memorize and how many do you still know today that you can kind of spout off? I'm betting that you can tell me more stories from middle school and high school than you can tell me definitions that you've memorized. And that's because like memories that are focused on experiences just work better long term. I want to be clear. That's something that's a little bit tricky with the, the MCAT is in undergrad, often you're studying today for a test on Friday, right? And so if something just sticks short term, like definitions, that's okay. And because that's how you're going to be tested. But for the MCAT, you're studying today for a test months from now. And so you need to make sure that this information is going to stick long term in that scenario. And so by going through experiences and stories, your brain is holding on to those things in a better way that is better able to handle long term memory. So that's one reason that this works better. It's just straight up your brain's better at remembering stories long term than it is definitions. But that's not the only reason. To be honest, that's enough reason to do this in and of itself. But the other reason this is useful for the MCAT is because the MCAT is never going to ask you for a definition. They're always asking you for application. They're always gonna give you stories asking you to apply social construct theory, right? Like what is the learning theory of language, right? Like what's going on with the humanist theory on um, on personality, right? And so 
everything is kind of story focused on the way that the MCAT's testing it and stories work better in your brain. So that's how you should be approaching the psych social section of the MCAT. I know a lot of students like to use the, there's like an 86 page document and a 300 page document that people have made out there, but you're way better off trying to make your own. And so don't just try to memorize all the definitions that somebody else gave or the examples that somebody else gave, because you need to make sure that you can conceptually apply that. So that's that's the biggest piece of advice I have for psychology and sociology is make up stories. And I know that, that sounds silly, but that's a way better way to do well on the MCAT in the psych social section than any other way that I've ever seen a student tackle it.